Hi there, welcome to another episode of Gaming Trend Daily. Today I want to talk a little bit about shock value in board games. And I think the best example of this in the modern board games is probably Cards Against Humanity. It's a game that's entirely, almost, almost entirely based on shock value. Um, you sit down, you're playing games, the cards have sometimes offensive terms on it, sometimes things that can be construed as racist, depending on how you mix them up. All sorts of different things on there. They're insults, they're um, intended to surprise you and shock you, and uh, they stand out against what we consider social norms. And this is particularly true when you start pairing cards, because I've seen in that game uh, very uh, sexual references, very um, racist references, I mean all kinds of different things like that, extremely violent references, and the, the, it's, it's a shocking value because those, those elements of the game go against the social norm that you expect. Another example of shock in games is Risk Legacy, actually. I think that's a good example of a shock in a game. Because in this case, it violates what we consider the social norms of board gaming. Uh, the social norm of board gaming is you keep your careful with your pieces. You don't write on your pieces. You don't write on the board. And uh, Risk Legacy, that's what you're supposed to do. That's part of the game. And I think that, that um, as part of the enjoyment of Risk Legacy is that it's pushing you against the social norm. It's got some shock value going for it. So regardless of how you feel about the gaming, you know, the gaming quality of those respective games, I mean, you could argue that maybe neither one of them uh, has much going on game-wise beyond the shock value. That's maybe your opinion. I think Risk Legacy actually turns into about the best version of Risk I've ever played when you get through a lot of the packets. I'm not really a big fan of Cards Against Humanity, but that's mostly because I just view it as apples to apples, and I don't think apples to apples is that great of a game any, either after you've played a bunch. But... Regardless of how you feel about those games as games, you can't deny them as experiences. They're memorable experiences once you've gone through it. You have the experience of altering the board in Risk Legacy, tearing up cards in Risk Legacy, applying stickers to the cards into the rule book to modify what they say in Risk Legacy. Very unique experience, something you don't normally do in board gaming, something that stands out because it breaks that social norm. It's got shock and it sticks with you. Same with Cards Against Humanity. The first time you slam down a card and it makes an extremely racist comment about the president, um, it's kind of memorable because it's something that really breaks a social taboo. Um, it's something that sticks with you because it, it pounds those uh, shock, that shock value right at you. But the thing is this, this is what I found interesting, is neither of those games, I mean Risk Legacy is considered a good game I think, but it's still Risk in the end which is not really considered that great of a game. Cards Against Humanity? I think it's considered a good game again, but I think it's mostly carried by the shock value. What I haven't seen yet is what I would consider a great game, a game that a lot of people would play just because of the game itself, without the shock value. We haven't really seen that yet. I, I know that there's a, the creator of Risk Legacy, Rob Davio, has a game coming out next year called Seafall that might actually be that. Um, it remains to be seen how that works out. I don't know. You're talking more than a year out. I don't know what that looks like. But the point is, even to this date, there's no game that has that kind of shock value that also is a good gamer's game. That really isn't that, that type of bridge. Uh, the games, if you look at the top of the Board Game Geek, top 10, top 20 list, top 30 list, you got to go down quite a, quite a ways before you get into a game that really pushes shock buttons. These games are very, rather than being shocking, they rely um, on just simply being a good game. They don't do anything shocking. They reward uh, careful contemplation and thinking rather than shocking you and pushing you in new directions. Um, I mean, they push you in new directions in terms of the board game mechanisms. They don't do anything that um, breaks social rules or breaks the norm standards of games. I would love to see more games that do things like this. Um, I'd love to see games that really take a risk and do something truly different, like editing the game pieces as you go along, or... Uh, Taking a game that forces you to break some sort of social norm. Um, it takes a creative mind to really come up with games that do that. I mean, you can argue whether or not Cards Against Humanity, you know, using an offensive version of Apples to Apples is creative, but you can say this is the very least they have a good sense of the pulse of what needs to be done to uh, shock you and make you um, realize the social norm that you're breaking by playing this particular combination of cards. You feel that button being pushed. That's something that happens rarely in games. That's the one good thing about Cards Against Humanity, I think is that it really exposes you to the social norms. And that's another thing I think is really interesting about Risk Legacy, and it says a lot about the people playing it, is that it breaks that social norm of gaming, and you can quickly see who is really tied to that social norm and who isn't. Some people are really tied to that norm of you don't damage your game. Those are the people that want to like uh, put wax paper or 
transparencies over the board so you can write in the transparencies and stuff like that. Or uh, put all the cards in sleeves and then put the stickers only on the sleeves. Or something like that. When you start doing things like that, you're afraid to break that social norm. I think that's an element that those games bring because they have shock value. I want to see more of that. I want to see more of that type of shock value. What can you do as a designer or as a, you know, what is your creative mind telling you that will break some sort of norm? What's a norm out there that people, people think of as just completely normal? How can you break it and tweak it and do something completely different? Even better, how can you make that a game of lasting appeal? And like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing if Seafall does this, which is a game coming up from the guy who created Risk Legacy. It may or may not, I don't know. I, I have no idea, but I think it's a, it's a game that's attempting to do this kind of bridging that I want to see. Creating a truly great lasting game that you want to play a thousand times, but still having that shock value of the creation of the, of, of, of the destruction, I guess, of a social or gaming norm that you just kind of assume and you feel almost uncomfortable breaking. Because it, make, it pushes you in new directions. And I hope to see it in the near future. I hope, you, I hope Rob, I hope you're doing it with Seafall. Um, see you next time.